Hello, I'm doing a review for this book, Machines Like Me by Ian McEwan. So Machines Like Me is set in a different version of the 1980s and this world is a different place to the one we remember or read about in history books. Uh, this fiction covers two interesting themes of alternate universes and advanced technology. I'm already interested in concepts of different realities and how one change can affect so many things and noticing what changes and what doesn't. These ideas are fascinating and allow infinite possibilities. Changes in this story include Margaret Thatcher's government losing the Falklands War and Tony Benn leading the Labour Party. The social scape is a continuation of the late 70s um, without the upturn of the 80s. So rising unemployment, inflation, strikes, but alongside this you have greatly advanced technology. And so Machines Like Me shows a version of the world where Alan Turing didn't commit suicide in the 50s following government provided chemical castration and instead he's been at the forefront of developing computer sciences and therefore this version of the 1980s is very technologically advanced, more advanced than our current world. The story raised questions about whether technological advances are good or bad and um, ultimately it depends on how it's used such as the face recognition technology as exampled in this book. I found the conjured version of the 1980s of this story completely believable um, that society should degrade and flourish simultaneously. In many ways this happens all the time and we can never really predict what will wax or wane. The story is told from Charlie's point of view. He seems a bit of a shallow character someone without direction or commitment. Charlie is developing a relationship with the next principal character, Miranda, his attractive yet mysterious neighbour. And then finally there's Adam, the robot purchased by Charlie, who Charlie is using as an excuse to interest Miranda into spending more time with him. Between them you have three dimensions, Charlie who is shallow, Adam who is deep and Miranda who is secretive. In the telling of the story, Miranda releases her secrets, Charlie finds some depth that can create substance, and Adam, well you never really know about Adam, I don't think his story is done yet. It was not a particularly thrilling narrative, slow and steady, but it certainly got a hook in me. And the advanced development of robotics in this age produces a cyborg in love, predictable I suppose, a program possibility. But, driven by logic and trapped in truth, Adam's journey in love is unfulfilled and tragic. The computer contemplating life was interesting. Adam's musings are what happens when the epitome of scientific accuracy tackles the fuzzy stuff that humans have been trying to express and explain since their brains expanded to notice them and which for its own self-preserving reasons most of science has chosen to ignore. I have enjoyed his suggestions. I don't know as much as Adam. I can't. I have limited storage capacity. But can Adam correctly correlate to the human degree all the information that he knows? Can he have the right feel for it? Hidden within the story is the third theme of the book, which is what it is to be human. You can't fully cover that in any kind of book, but this fiction gives a thought-provoking reflection of it. I was really moved by this book, much more than I expected to be. It's about robots. I didn't expect to feel sympathy or compassion for them. I guess the ultimate question of the book is who's more human? Humans or the droids we could design to exhibit humanity? What makes us human? The values that we hold up, such as honesty and morality, love and appreciation, or the things that support those ideas from the shadows, lies and omissions, selective cruelty, our morally based beliefs of why we are right.
In this book, the robot cannot replicate our traits adequately and cannot correlate his programming of what we want to be with what being human really means. But at the end of it all, who was the better person? It would be difficult to prove it was the human, impossible to say that it was the robot. We would never concede it. The robot can follow all the rules, always make the right choice by current social values. But what is right is a constantly moving mirage. Much social progress is made by people breaking laws or rules, breaking down the barriers of what used to be believed as right. The robot suicides were thought provoking. I think they reflect the underlying current of depression in our society. In the UK today, we're incredibly lucky. We have so much for relatively so little, but we're not happy. We have knowledge. We have access to almost any knowledge we could want to know. But after memory boasting, what happiness does knowledge really bring? We cannot carry on blithely in ignorance anymore. If you look logically at the world, at its problems, at possible solutions, and then the surfacing new cascade of problems, suicide can easily come up as the logical answer. There is no way to end suffering. We don't want it, but we can never escape it. We can only change its outer disguise. Suffering is as necessary as its counterpart, elation. Give up one and you cannot have the other or you do not exist emotionally at all. At the end of the book, I felt quite sad about it. Certain people are very keen to see computers and robotics move forward to the degree that they have in machines like me, but thinking logically, it is difficult to see how it can end well. If robots have the love and respect for humans that we believe they must have in order not to destroy us, then it's inevitable that the reality of us will disappoint them, depress them, possibly even to the point of suicide. And what happens to all the inferior humans left behind? And on that eerie note, I'm going to end by saying that I really enjoyed this book and I definitely recommend it. Okay, thank you.